Hey, what's going on, fam? So, real quick, I just want to talk about uh, a Tatiana Jefferson and her murder and how ADOS should respond to it, how us as Black First, Foundational Black Americans, ADOS, how we should respond to it. Um, and as you guys know, uh, the sister, Miss Jefferson, she was in her home playing video games with her nephew, a lot like Botham John was sitting on his couch eating ice cream when a race soldier ran in uh, and shot her because her neighbor had called because her neighbor was allegedly concerned because her door was left open into her apartment. So instead of, you know, going in and investigating and announcing yourself and saying, you know, freeze so she so she could have had a chance to, I don't know, respond you just ran up in there and, and gunned her down. So, um, we know that this is white supremacy. We know that this doesn't happen to white people. We know that they would not have ran up in a white person's home and shot them down. They would have stopped. If they saw a white person, they would have asked questions. They would have tried to figure out what was going on. But when they saw a black person, uh, you know, they're trigger happy and they murder her in cold blood. We know the deal. We know this is white supremacy. This is why I talk about white supremacy. And that's my whole channel is uh, uh, is about dis discussing and addressing white supremacy. Because this is the consequences of allowing white supremacy to exist. These are the consequences of taking white supremacy lightly. Because it can happen to any of us. And even if you are selfish, if you want to be a selfish coon, and that's why you don't want to fight for and excuse the background noise, I'm actually sitting in my car while I'm making this video. But, um, so there was a car driving by. But anyway, I digress. Even if you're a selfish coon, and uh, saving other black people from white supremacy doesn't motivate you, your selfishness should still motivate you to fight white supremacy because it can happen to any of us. It's random. Uh, a, a person who I've referenced in other videos, I, I don't say that he's gospel and you should take every agree with every little thing he says, but he does say a lot of good things, a lot of smart things, a lot of things that educate people on white supremacy, and that's Tariq Nasheed. And he talks about something called the white supremacy lottery. And that's a very good example here because it shows how white supremacy sometimes is like a lottery. It doesn't only pick out militant black people or black panthers or rebellious black people, which is what a lot of coons think. Well, if, if I coon, I'll be protected from white supremacy. White supremacy is random. Uh, Miss Jefferson, she could have been a bad wench. Even if she had a black boyfriend, she could have had inner bed wench feelings. She, she could have been a scandal fan. She could have been a coon. She could have been a Republican. We don't know who she was. She could have been dating white men, Asian men, Latino men. It doesn't matter. Or she could have been pro-black. But it's random. It wasn't based on whether or not she was militant. That's my point. It's random. White supremacy is random. A lot of times. It's not always random. But a lot of times when it picks its victims, a lot of times the victim picking is random. A lot of times it's not random. But a lot of times it is random. But this is the consequences of the Botham John family forgiving and, and all these other coons who forgive and all these other coons who and Sambos who make excuses for white supremacy left and right all day every day who who uh, tap dance for Democrat uh, white supremacists those who tap dance for Republican white supremacists it doesn't matter these are the consequences of the forgiveness babble and the Samboism But the other thing I want to talk about, too, is how should we respond to this? As in, should we be fighting for Ms. Jefferson? Should we be advocating for justice for her? Or should we kind of sit back and not really speak on this until we see how things turn out? The reason why I propose this is because, as some of you know, there's a philosophy among some people in black society that maybe we should fall back on some of these cases because... Sleazy Merit, as I've talked about in other videos, go check out my other, I think I have like, two, what, three videos, two or three videos on Sleazy Merit, Esley Merit. He's already on the case, so you know he's already negotiating a settlement bag. 
Um, he, he's going to have the family out there doing that forgiveness talk, that grace and Christianity babble. Um, he's going to have them doing that because we've seen this routine. We've seen this dog and pony show before, not just with the Botham John case, but with several other cases. We can go back almost every police brutality case and we can probably find at least one or two mem family members that's either for outright forgiving or semi forgiving. Uh, so we, we know, the, we know the plan and we know the trick bag and we know what sleazy merit is up here for. What he does is he pretends to be grassroots. He pretends to be pro black, um, so that he can get black society riled up about these cases. So we can be out here with using our energy to demand, demand justice, to get him a settlement bag. So then we, and we can be pushing for, for consequences for this. And then right when it's time to get time to punish somebody, that's when all of a sudden it's, it's uh kumbaya time it, it it's we all in this together time it's um love conquers hate time when 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 it's time to get punished now all of a sudden it's time for that now of course it's never time for love conquers hate it's never time for uh god's grace it's never time for that when a black person is supposed to get punished for a crime and, and, and go to prison we never it's never time for for grace and love uh, for a black person and that's whether that black person victimized white people or other black people it's never time for for grace and love and forgiveness and um and, and and all of that stuff in kumbaya time. It's 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 never time for that with black people and black defendants. But with white defendants, especially when it's a racial case like this who, where they killed a black person, right up until punishment time, it's all Mr. Merritt is going to be is going to be uh pushing is going to be full bore out there in the forefront going hard for justice. Right up until it's time to actually get justice. Then all of a sudden everybody's going to be forgiving. And Sleazy Merritt is going to be co-signing the forgiving. And explaining and doing press conferences and PR. Explaining the forgiving. And he might even be copping excuses for the judges. Corrupt judges or corrupt jury members. Like he did for Judge Tammy. So the fact that he's on the case. Again, this is why we should sit back because we should no longer allow ourselves to be used as donkeys or mules for someone like Sleazy Merritt's own monetary come up. We are not. What the hell is that noise? Hopefully, y'all don't hear that. I hear some noise in the background, but anyway. Um. So yeah, we're not gonna be. We're not gonna be. Uh, uh, the money vehicle. We're not going to use our energy to be the money vehicle for sleazy marriage. So I, I say, family, we need to sit back. We need to kind of wait and see how things turn out. We need to see if the family is going to say this was a racist attack. We're going to see if the family says that this was a white supremacist attack. Because if they don't say it was racist, why should we? I mean, that's their own family. Their own family doesn't care enough to stand up and fight for their, their, their uh, deceased daughter's justice and call it what it was her death what it was it was an act of white supremacy and we need to first wait and see if any of her family members are going to call it an act of white supremacy an act of racism an act of anti-black racism because if they don't use those that exact terminology or very very extremely close to that exact terminology we shouldn't support or not i'm not saying we shouldn't support because we should always want justice because again white supremacy is random so I want to be careful. I don't want to say we shouldn't support her at all. We should be glad if the white supremacists get off because white supremacy is random and it can happen to any of us. But what I'm saying is, is that we should maybe hold our public outrage until we see what the family says. And then when, if, if the family is coons, then we can uh, go in on, on the family for being coons. But before we start caping for justice for the sister, let's see if the family is willing to. And then whether they're willing to or not, that's when we'll take our approach, whether or not we start dealing with getting her justice from the racist justice system, racist, just, uh, racist judicial system, or whether or not we need to focus on her family, uh, abandoning her and showing her, showing hatred towards her after her death by doing this pandering and forgiveness talk so they can get a settlement bag. We need to wait and see. But anyway, fam, I didn't want to make this video too long. Um, that's just my take. We need to sit back. We need to wait. 
we need to watch out because Sleazy Merritt's on the case. So he's already negotiating a settlement bag behind the scenes. So whenever you see him on Twitter or on TV out here talking about he's going to get justice for Tatiana, he's going to get justice for Joshua Brown. He He's just negotiating his settlement bags and he uses black society. He profits off black death and then he uses a living black people to help fuel his profiting off black death. But anyway, like, share, subscribe. That's another video. Peace.